Welcome to the tutorial series on network analysis made simple. In this session, we shall discuss on voltage and current sources. Friends, do you know why the study of sources is so important? You know that a network without any source is passive, it has no life because the sources are those which deliver energy to the network. But in practice, you have different types of sources. For example, the sources could be voltage sources or current sources, independent or dependent sources, ideal or practical sources, DC or AC sources. So to solve the network, we should be able to understand what type of network it is and how it behaves in the network and then only we will be able to solve the network very easily. First, let us consider the ideal DC voltage source. The ideal DC voltage source is defined as that which is capable of delivering a specified DC voltage across its terminals irrespective of the network configuration connected across it. It is called as ideal source because its internal resistance is assumed to be zero. Then what is a practical DC voltage source? Again a practical DC voltage source is one which is capable of delivering specified voltage across its terminals irrespective of the network configuration connected across it. In this case, the internal resistance is shown to be connected in series with the source as shown in figure. Friends, till now we discussed about the ideal independent DC voltage sources. Now let us see what is an ideal DC current source. Again, an ideal DC current source is defined as that which is capable of delivering specified current through its terminals irrespective of the network configuration connected across it. And similarly, it is called as ideal DC current source because its internal resistance is assumed to be zero. Now, let us see what is practical DC current source. Again, a practical DC current source can be defined as that which is capable of delivering specified current through its terminals irrespective of the network configuration connected across it, but its internal resistance is shown to be connected in parallel with the source as shown in figure. Friends, before we discuss about AC sources, we shall see what is the main difference between DC and AC sources. For example, in DC sources, the quantities such as voltage, current, resistance, all are represented only in magnitude. Whereas in AC sources, all the quantities such as voltage, current, resistance, inductance, capacitance or impedance all are represented both in magnitude and phase angle or all are represented as phases. But remember, power is absorbed or consumed only in resistance in both DC and AC circuits because power consumed in pure inductance and pure capacitance is zero. First, let us discuss about ideal and practical AC voltage sources. An ideal AC voltage source is defined as that which is capable of providing specified voltage across its terminals irrespective of the network configuration connected across it. And the internal impedance of the AC source is considered to be zero in ideal AC voltage source. Whereas 
in practical ac voltage source a practical ac voltage source is defined as that which is capable of providing specified ac voltage across its terminals irrespective of the network configuration connected across it and the internal impedance of the ac source is considered to be connected in series with the voltage source as shown in figure friends now let us define ideal and practical ac current sources an ideal ac current source is one which is capable of delivering specified ac current through its terminals irrespective of the network configuration connected across it and its internal impedance is assumed to be zero as shown whereas the practical ac current source is one which is again capable of delivering specified current through its terminals irrespective of the network configuration connected across it and its internal impedance is shown to be connected in parallel with the current source as shown in figure and these sources are called as independent sources because the magnitude of either the voltage and the current to be delivered is independent of any other parameter of the network and this fact we will see in the next discussion friends as i discussed earlier the sources could either be independent sources or they could be dependent sources the dependent sources are also called as controlled sources as you know an independent voltage or current source is one whose magnitude of the voltage or the current to be delivered is entirely independent of any other parameter of the network whereas dependent or controlled sources voltage or current to be delivered is dependent upon some parameter of the network for example the voltage source could be controlled either by the voltage across any element or across any branch of a network or it could be dependent upon the current flowing through the network element or current flowing through the branch of a network hence dependent or controlled sources are categorized as voltage control sources and current control sources and we shall see the details of this in the next discussion friends first let us discuss about the dependent voltage sources or these are so are called as controlled voltage sources and the voltage to be delivered by such sources could either be controlled by either the voltage or the current in any other part of a network for example the dependent voltage source value may be dependent on either the voltage across any other element or across any other branch of a network such sources are called as voltage controlled voltage sources and they are designated as pc vs for example in the controlled voltage source shown in figure the voltage vx is the voltage across any other branch or the element of a network as shown whereas a is some constant and this source is called as voltage controlled voltage sources similarly the dependent voltage source value may be dependent on the current through any other element or through any branch of a network such sources are called as current controlled voltage sources and they are designated as ic vs for example in the current controlled voltage source shown in figure 
the current ix is the current through any other branch or through any other element of other part of the network whereas b is constant therefore this dependent voltage source is capable of delivering b into ix volts and note that all independent sources are represented by a circle whereas dependent sources are represented by a rhombus as shown in figure the dependent current sources are also called as controlled current sources because the current to be delivered by such sources could either be dependent on the voltage or the current in any other part of the network for example the voltage controlled current source shown in figure is capable of delivering c into vx amperes where c is some constant and vx is the voltage across any element or across any branch of a network such sources are called as voltage controlled current sources and they are designated as vcis similarly the dependent current source shown in figure is capable of delivering d into ix amperes where d is some constant and ix is the current flowing through any circuit element or through any branch of a network such sources are called as current controlled current sources and they are designated as ic is friends let us summarize what we have learned in this tutorial i hope you are in a position to recognize the controlled sources shown here for example figure 1 is a voltage controlled voltage source whereas figure 2 is a voltage controlled current source similarly figure 3 is a current controlled voltage source whereas figure 4 is a current controlled current source similarly i hope you are in a position to identify the dc sources shown in figure you see that all the sources shown here are independent sources for example figure 1 is an ideal dc voltage source figure 2 is a practical dc voltage source and figure 3 is the ideal dc current source whereas figure 4 is a practical dc current source similarly figure 1 is an ideal ac voltage source and figure 2 is a practical ac voltage source figure 3 is an ideal ac current source and figure 4 is a, a practical ac current source and all are independent sources friends in this tutorial we have just seen how to define different types of sources and how to represent them but more than this handling of the sources in a network is very very important because the network may contain different types of a number of sources and those sources could either be connected in series or could be connected in parallel and sometimes we may have to shift the source from one branch to other branch and source conversion that is from voltage source to current source or current source to voltage source is to be understood clearly and concept of shifting the sources also is important and we will see the handling of these sources in a different tutorial and i sincerely thank you for watching this tutorial and hope this tutorial will be helpful 
in uh, understanding the handling concepts. Thank you very much for watching again.